Hello, everybody. So today I want to cover three early days stocks. These are stocks that have been recommended by people who watch the channel. And so I'm thankful for all of the recommendations. And I've, ta I've taken a look and I've grouped those stocks into early stocks because these stocks are not optimized for gross margin yet. They are so early. So I just want to go over Luminar. Innovix and Ginkgo Biowalk. So the first stock is Luminor. Luminor is a LiDAR company. They, they intend to make LiDARs for a lot of the legacy automakers, either for ICE cars, but actually mostly it's going to be mostly for electric cars that these automakers are rolling out. And they have a very noble goal of actually uh, saving lives, saving millions of lives that they say within 100 years. That's a very bold goal. And actually, they had a they had a, a keynote presentation, a three hour plus keynote presentation recently, uh, where they talk about their their grand vision and their grand goals to to save lives. I mean, this, this is a company that's on a mission. They, they have a lot of Tesla esque elements. It's definitely the most polished marketing that I've seen out of the three companies today. Really, really good marketing team, a good investor relations team. Uh, they've planned, they, Luminar is planned to be using 20 production vehicle models. Their position for exponential growth, scalable profits, you know, that's their pitch. And they say they're expecting triple digit revenue growth every year for the next five years or 32x from now. But their base is so small, let's not be too impressed because the base of their current sales is extremely, extremely small. So how did Luminor do in the stock market? Well, it, um, I mean, it didn't, didn't do too well, right? It traded almost at 40 bucks and now it's trading at 580. Um, I actually remember uh, the CEO of his company coming on CNBC when they, when they were um, going public, right? And it was, it was, it, it was, it was kind, kind of crazy for their SPAC. And um, CEO is good marketer as well. I'll say about this company is the CEO is a very good marketer. Um, the revenue trailing 12 months has been 41 million, so that's not much. And the price to sales is a 52x. So all I can say right now is that this is an R&D company. This is an early company. It's not not optimized for any of the metrics we would typically use. They've guided a February 2028 revenue of 1.3 billion, right, using the 32x. Uh, that, that's when we'd know February 2028. And so even with that, even with 1.3 billion in sales, at that valuation, at the current valuation of 2 billion, that would be a 1.6x sales. And it's, uh, there's a few compelling companies right now that actually trade trade around that and you have you have this revenue right now so i just want to say that this is an expensive stock you're paying a premium for that story by any standard as i look at this stock i'm like wow that is expensive a two billion dollar company they, they have very few sales that's expensive um it's especially expensive when you look at the enterprise value of this company first of all let me go free cash flow is negative 95 million over the past 12 months so you have 488 million on balance sheet and so that would give them about a five-year runway and you may be thinking oh this is fine but, but, but they have 612 million in long-term debt. And I, I don't own this stock, but if I own this stock, I would look at the 10K to be sure that none of that debt is rolling over anytime soon. Because this is a company that has more debt than cash on the balance sheet. It's, 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 it's concerning, actually. So it's a little bit concerning to have so, so much debt after a cash injection that the SPAC gave them. And I also typically don't care too much about that. Um, but the, the, uh, I would argue the investor that cares about a uh, stock-based compensation, um, they may care about seeing... 165, they're not real dollar, it's equivalent, right? Equivalent in a stock-based compensation. Um, that's, that's a, that's, that begins to be in, in, a, in the high territory for, for SBC for a lot of investors. Not for me, because I, I don't mind SBC. I think it's important for a company to keep cash on their balance sheet. But, but given that they already have this much debt and they have to give SBC, this tells me that this is a company that costs a lot to operate. And this is a company that is investing heavily in their LiDAR technology. But I think, you know, what, what, what's more important to look at is, you know, first of all, this company is a startup, still a startup in my view. What's important to look at is two things regarding to this company. So 
there is the view that this company will, of course, place its product within a lot of upcoming vehicles from legacy automakers. But the question is, how much trust do we put in the speed of the rollout of many of these EV vehicles? Like we know a lot of electric vehicles, uh, legacy automakers have announced EVs in 2024 and 2025. We know they have these very aggressive timelines. You know, I don't think a lot of these traditional automakers are going to meet the timelines that they set out and that Luminor is using its, in its own presentation. I, I really, I really don't, don't think so. And the second question that I have is, okay, so the stock clearly is valued on its, on its, on its intellectual property. But I'm an industry outsider and I have no way to tell you when, when, I, when I look at the presentation on their keynote, the presentation of your chief technology officer, I have no way to know how competitive this is, right? I'm not I'm an insider of this industry. It, it, it looks really good. Like I said, they're really good at making good looking sli slides. They get an A plus for the slides quality. But, you know, I have no way to, to actually judge the quality of the product, which to me adds so much uncertainty that I wouldn't be interested in buying this stock. But I do know enough about the, the free main system of in the future self-driving technology to know that LiDAR to know that LiDAR is competing with a vision only approach, which is what Tesla is now is now going going forward. And, and and I think a lot of a lot of people in that space are arguing that vision only could be a way. And by the way, the, the wires in the ground, which was one of the earlier methods, like putting a, a sensor in every signal and in, in the ground, that has been abandoned. So we know that there's already been competing technologies for future self-driving that have been abandoned. Um, are we going to have two, are we going to have both LiDAR and vision? Are we going to have just LiDAR? Are we going to have just vision? I don't know yet. And so there is some doubt as to whether the future of, uh, of LiDAR will be the future or not. And by the way, when you w when you invest in Tesla, right? I, I have a big position in Tesla. I don't have to know to invest in Tesla because I don't invest in Tesla based on the future self-driving capabilities of vehicle. Just the sales of vehicles are enough. But for this, you would kind of have to know whether LiDAR is going to be the winning technology or not. And I, I, I would argue we, we're, there is doubt out. We don't know yet. We don't know. I mean, may, LiDAR may be a part of it, but it may not. And to me, that creates just a lot of, a lot of uncertainty. Um, nonetheless, interesting company. I, I, I wish uh, all investors in this company a lot of luck. I just don't have enough information about the space for me to ever make a decision about Luminar. Now, let me move on to Innovix, which is another stock that was recommended by, by my viewers, right? So Innovix, very interesting company too. It's a better and safer battery for your devices. I think we advertise something like 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 30 to 40 percent uh, more capacity um, in, in, in the battery. The battery is also easier to charge, charges faster, and they also have enhanced thermal performance and, and, and an enhanced design in general, which make it so that actually when you when you do a, a nail test and you, you, you punch a nail into a battery, the, the standard legacy batteries explode, but the uh, regular battery actually just, just do doesn't do much, creates a little bit of heat, but not much. So, so it is both a, a play on a safer battery, but also a better battery in the sense that it charges faster and it stores more energy. And really, their lab right now, I would argue, is mostly experimental. You know, when you when you when you're dealing with with batteries, batteries are so prevalent in every single piece of electronics that even if you're estimating that for full 2023 you'll make 180,000 units you know, that, that, that is not enough. Like, especially in their presentation, they start talking about selling these batteries uh, to car makers and car manufacturers. Well, imagine that how many of these do you need in a car? Probably hundreds, probably hundreds. So that's not, that's not a lot at all, which is why they're pushing towards in a halfway through 2024 building a Southeast Asia manufacturing facility that will have it's a wide range they claim here but between 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 9 and 19 million units maybe done in Gen 2 and I would argue that is not enough at all 
either. And, 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 and again, the, 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 the issue is that, yes, Gen 2 is better than Gen 1. And so what you see is that they think that Gen 2 is going to be able to do uh, 1,300 units per hour versus Generation 1 factory can only do 100 units per hour. But I would argue, given the need of batteries that we need, the need for batteries, I would argue this is, this is absolutely, absolutely not going to be enough. And if I, if, if I may just, just talk a little bit about this, the, the whole point for using cylinder or cylindrical batteries, and that's, that's the technology that Tesla is pushing, and it seems like a lot of uh, auto, auto companies, but also battery companies, are taking the lead of Tesla. The reason why they're using cells, right, cylindrical cells as a form factor as opposed to this, uh, this flat almost, it's not a pouch, I know it's not a pouch for them, but it's the, the form factor is the same as a pouch, right? It's a rectangular form factor. The, the reason why they use the, the cylindrical form factor is because it's easy to manufacture. You don't have to have multiple steps of, 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 of squeezing a structure onto the cell. You can just have a factory that runs 24 seven fully automated. When you do this, you have a lot of, a lot of stop and go within the manufacturing process. And you can clearly, you can clearly see it right here in the way, in the way this is set up. You have a lot of stop and go. If you go in the investor presentation, they show you how they assemble it. It's a lot of stamping. It's a lot of squeezing things together. And you just can't increase the speed of these manufacturing lines as much as you can with a round cylindrical system, which is the whole reason why, why, why this system works. And also the, the round or cylindrical system or the cylindrical um, uh, batteries, like in Tesla, that has been solved. That is the way they end up with, with, with Tesla's not catching on fire is because they have these segregated energy cells. So, so this is doing the same thing at a structural level. Again, I am not an expert in this field either, but it seems to me like there is some doubt. And if there is some doubt, that's at least an orange flag for me. And that's at least I got to be careful, right? That's what it says. Now, let's look at the performance. Let me finish with the performance of this stock. It's actually done really well for us back. It's only down 62% that is from the peak. I always use the peak here. Uh, they're actually higher than the, than the, than the, the SPAC uh, introduction, actually, just a tad higher. So so this is nice, but um, so it's actually a, a nice performance if you're really being realistic. Price sales ratio is not applicable. They only have six million in revenue. That's a 348 price sales ratio. Absolutely not 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 applicable. Free cash flow is minus 70 million. They have cash on balance sheet 322 million. Four and a half years of growth runway and no debt. So vi this is a kind of a sleeper so stock, right? You, you don't have any sort of Damocles hanging over, over your head here. Uh, so it's a sleep at well at night startup stock. I mean, it's as good as it gets for a startup stock because at this run rate and the cash on the balance sheet, you know, it, 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 I don't think it's gonna do much for mul multiple years, but that cash on the balance sheet clearly uh, is able to finance the cash burn. So, so it's a bet, it's a bet. That's all I have to say here, it's, it's a bet. Um, demand seems to be very high for the product at 600 and 600 and, and, uh, and eight, 669 million dollars of backlog or what they call design wins in their in their spreadsheet uh, which are products that are very specifically designed for manufacturers um, that, that's high right but the question is that's a tremendous backlog the question, question is will they be able to manufacture and will they be able to manufacture enough without burning too much cash, right? Because last quarter, I just want to reemphasize that they only made 4,400 sales last quarter. So this company is very early. This is a story of manufacturing. I believe if you invest in this company, you have to have both a, a clear understanding of, of battery technology, at least a much better than mine, and you need to have a clear understanding of manufacturing battery technology, and, and then, you, then you may want to take a position or not in the stock. To me, it's definitely on, on, the, on the too hard, too hard pile. And the last stock that I will put on uh, th this video is Ginkgo Biowork, ticker symbol DNA. So Ginkgo Biowork Ginkgo is, is a special situation in my view. 
it's it's an engineer it's a cell engineering platform right and and they have they have different ways of making money and recognizing revenue like sometimes they'll do licensing sometimes they will accept to develop a um, you know, a cell compound or to develop a, 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 a synthetic um, DNA type of thing. They, they'll accept to develop it sometimes for um, uh, like a share in the business or a share in, in the, the healthcare uh, company that's trying to develop something. So, so they have a very interesting uh, way of earning revenue, which makes it more risky and more complicated to analyze. So I just, just want to point that out. Uh, they also have, have are investing heavily in their manufacturing, which is another risk, right? Because they're investing a lot of money and, and, and it costs a lot. But I, I would argue that, that if, it, if this and this were the only sections of a business, I think this is a business that whose, whose stock chart would very much look like Innovix, I think. Because the, 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 the core business is, is, is a great idea and it lies right at the start, right at the beginning of the, the next revolution in, in, in healthcare, which is, which is you know, genomic or uh, what Cathy calls multi-omics. Multi it's, it lies right at the, this, uh, this early stage development. So the core business, I would argue, is quote unquote here, quote unquote great. The, the core business for a SPAC, for a start startup early day stock is doing well. In my view, Ginkgo suffers from association with the events of 2020. Because when you look at this talk, you will see that Ginkgo was, and that was probably the right thing to do, they were very um, opportunistic. I mean, from, from a standpoint, you have, you, have, you have a startup that's losing a bunch of money, you have an opportunity that presents itself, you're going to take advantage of the opportunity. And Ginkgo did really, really a good job at taking advantage of what they, they call the biosecurity um, seg segment on the business. That's why that's what they call this, this segment of the business, and they had this company called Concentric, and Concentric was provided providing the tests, right? Mostly uh, uh, no no swab tests at eight airports. And when you look at the list of airports that they had, right, JFK and Atlanta. Atlanta is nothing less than the most most visited airport in the world. So wow, this is a company who had, that did extremely well on this business. And when you look at the the income statement, right? When you look at the income, you clearly, clearly, clearly see it. This is a company whose core business has been doing just fine and growing just fine, right? At 40%, 23%, average is, average is 25%. And then there are other programs right here, gr growing quite a bit of the new programs at 90%, right? That's pretty that's pretty good despite macro. So that grows, that grows. Um, but then look, look what happened between 2020 and 2021 on their biosecurity program, which they likely launched in 2020. They went from 17 to 201 million. So, so what, 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 what is that? A 15, 15, 16 X, 16 times. And then they grew another 150% in 2022. So that was extremely successful. The, the airport testing and, and, and all sorts of testing, extremely successful. And I mean, I guess they did the right thing getting the money into the business because it's a risky business, a SPAC. They did the right thing doing that. But the stock was trading in accordance to that. And of course, they're, they're, they're expensive expecting down 66%. They're, they're, they're expecting the, the, the business to be, you know, cut by two thirds, two thirds in 2023. That's what they're expecting. And this is a business that's probably going to go back to, to, the, to the 2020 levels. And so this is a stock that's going to be showing terrible earnings and terrible numbers for one year, two years, probably. And, and, and are you prepared with that? Because the, the market, Mr. Market is not going to dig deeper into the company and dissociate the core business with the, opportunities, the, with the opportunistic business that they had in 2020. They're not, they're not going to make that, that, uh, that distinction. And it's going to be like, oh, look, you know, uh, the revenue for DNA went from 478 million to 275 million. The, the company absolutely not doing well. Well, when you look under the hood, the company is doing just fine. The core business of the company is doing just fine. It's just that they had they had a, a they had a two-year business 
that disappears. And I don't think the market is going to see that granularity, just like if you, you know, if you see the stock charts of, of like, like neobanks or t television stocks or, or Zoom, you, you would, you would, you, you would believe that we're going, we're going back in time. You would, you would believe that everybody's getting back into the office, etc. And it's not, it's not the case. And the same is not the case for, for, for this either. But I think this is a, this is a stock that's going to be dragged down for a long while. And that is how I explain this awful performance from the stock. You know, 2020 is not here anymore. This stock thrived in 2020. Let's sell it off. That's the way I view it. Um, anyways, the revenue was very high, but we now we, we know why partially the revenue was so high. Gross margin was very high. We also know why that gross margin was very high. Um, I tried to recalculate the free cash flow, so so be careful with this with, with this one uh, because I get a lot of uh, depending on how I calculate it, I get less than that often. So just be careful. But I, I had to, I tried to recalculate it, so it's kind of my my doctor of free cash flow here, um, and, and it looks worse in the way I calculated it than it does on any. Any of the websites where you have to look at free cash flow and the cash the cash on balance sheet I didn't include the receivables in there so the cash on balance sheet is is, is 1.45 billion so this is a stock that almost has a five-year runway and they have no debt so this is yet again per the way I, I usually calculate this it's 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 a it's a, a no sword of Damocles debt it's like Enovix they this is a stock. It's a, you can sleep. You, it's it's going to be a sleeper for like three years, I think, or four years, or or maybe more, or maybe less. But it's 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 really it's really we're really not going to have a lot of actions. It's going to be owned by the shorts for the longest time. Um, I have one red flag for Ginkgo though, and that red flag is the stock-based compensation. Stock-based compensation. I usually don't care. But uh, this is perhaps the only stock of the channel where I've said that I care. And now I care. Because if you look, 25% of new shares year over year, they had, they've had a 25% rough increase, roughly increase of new shares year over year. The stock doesn't need that right now. And so, and, and, and so again, I'm, I'm, I don't like to see that at all. I don't like to see that at all. Um, but I think at, out of all of, all of the free companies, um, this is this is perhaps my preferred company out of the three companies, and that's all I that's all that's all I will say. Uh, they're all definitely very early days, very risky, but with very high risk, may come tremendously high reward. Right? Go back to the early folks who invested in say a, a Tesla, right? Or or I could I could use so many other stocks. If you're early, you 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 can you can get to mind-boggling amounts. So 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 um, that's that's another aspect to explore of investing. Anyways, thank you so much for watching the video. This is not investment advice, right? This is just entertainment. Appreciate your likes. Appreciate your subscribes. Thank you, and have a great day.